All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about real music, real controversy. Oh, I don't know how we're going to survive this controversy. And doing it uh, in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. All of a sudden, I felt like Ted Knight there for a second, just like for <laughs> Ted Knight. How much do we miss Ted Knight? Just, oh, man. Um the likes of these great people, like people who are similar to these people that we've lost over the years, they're not coming back. It's just like the music. They're not coming back. Well, you're just old. Yeah, yeah, but I'm looking at the current crop of talent out there. And uh, whether it's music or television or the movies, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm just, I'm stuck. I'm stuck in a decade and I can't get out. Speaking of a band that's kind of stuck in a decade and you want to hang out with, it's grand and second to none. Now, I'm going to be talking about Foreigner in this video. Now, I know some people don't want me to talk about Foreigner, but fans of Lou Graham, you guys might like this video. Anyway, second to none by the band Grand. Um, again, if you're a fan of Journey, Foreigner, um, Richard Marks, I, I mentioned as a reference point, some really great songwriting and some great vocals, um, super high tenor vocals. So uh, it's Matthias Olofsson. He's the lead singer. Had him on the show, uh, kind of butchered that interview, but he was he was really good. So um, so here's the story. Foreigner announces. Now, if you say it like this, say Foreigner. It's easier instead of foreigner. It's foreigner announces farewell. The best of foreigner hot blooded edition. Why are they doing this? Well, Valentine's Day is coming up and everybody thinks of being hot blooded during Valentine's Day. I would change the lyrics to something like pure blooded. Check it and see, you know, hey, you're looking at a pure blooded American right here, ladies and gentlemen. That would be me. Um, and I'm hoping you're pure blooded as well for Valentine's Day, because that's actually more important than being a hot blooded person. Anyway, you're, if you're struggling to find a Valentine's Day gift uh, for the music fan in your life, Foreigners got you covered. The band is releasing the limited edition compilation. Farewell uh, for five years, the best of foreigner hot blooded edition on red vinyl. That ought to put your significant other in the mood. If you know what I mean with that red vinyl, uh, promoting it as a perfect Valentine's gift for your loved ones. Hmm. The album features many of the band's biggest hits. Now, um, this is where I think it's going to tick some people off. The album features many of the band's biggest hits, produced by Mick Jones with Jeff Pilson. Who's the singer on this? Who's the singer? I'm waiting. Is it Lou Graham? Mm, doesn't seem to be. Um, if it's produced with Jeff Pilson. See, Jeff Pilson, unless he's going in there and doing something to the original songs, I'm thinking these are Kelly Hansen versions of the songs that you know and love. So you're going to go out and buy. Now, again, they've they've done this before. They've put out the acoustic uh, hits with Kelly and they've put out the orchestral hits with Kelly. <laughs> and and soon they're going to do the EDM hits with Kelly. I don't know how else they can doctor up these songs. But anyway, uh, these are likely Kelly Hansen versions of songs like Feels Like the First Time, Cold as Ice, Double Vision, Hot Blooded, of course, and I Want to Know What Love Is. Should you play I Want to Know What Love Is on Valentine's Day? <laughs> Honey, I'm still struggling with this. I want to know what love is. And of course, Jukebox Hero, which is, you know, one of my favorite Valentine's tunes, Jukebox Hero. Um, <laughs> it's just doesn't make sense. Um, anyway, only 5,000 of these puppies, these individually numbered copies will be available uh, and you can order them right now. So you probably won't get them in time for Valentine's Day. Fans, by the way, it says here, fans still have a chance to listen to all of those songs live. 
Foreigner is set to kick off the next leg of their farewell tour on March 1st in Newark, Oklahoma. Now, visualize a table with 117 legs underneath, all right? Which leg is this of the farewell tour? Well, you know, what we're saying really is we were going to tour for nine months. Now we're going to tour for six months. And then, you know, we'll hang out with sticks and then we'll do really well. We'll make bank with sticks. And then next year, eh, we'll do it again with sticks. And maybe we'll add another band and we'll make even more bank. And Kelly Hansen will miraculously feel better. He will be able to sing these songs for another 20 years. And uh, nobody will ever remember when they announce their farewell tour. Farewell? We were just kidding. No farewell. So if you're a Lou Graham fan, would you want to buy the Kelly Hansen versions of these songs? Now, granted, right? Um, sometimes if you redo a song and it's acoustic or it's reworked in a certain way, it's interesting. But again, you're putting out all of these songs on vinyl, <laughs> on vinyl, and you're asking fans for Valentine's Day to pay top dollar for red vinyl. And these aren't the original songs. It's one thing to put out a CD of redos and say, hey, check out the Kelly Hansen versions of these songs. But if you want the radio versions, are they playing Kelly Hansen versions on the radio? Did I miss that? Because I haven't heard them on the radio. I think most fans would uh, appreciate the originals. And so I don't think these are going to be the originals. Look, I've made the case that I don't mind Kelly being the lead singer. In fact, Kelly, I think, currently is the best lead singer for Foreigner. Lou is still out there. Some fans are loyal to Lou. Lou has lost his fastball a bit, throwing a lot of off-speed stuff, curveballs. He's become one of those uh, late innings pitchers that come in and, uh, you know, they have all this weird stuff. People have been seeing fastballs for the entire game. Lou comes out there and he throws curveballs. He throws sliders, you know. He's not, look, to see Lou Graham for a lot of people, that's cool. You know, there's Lou Graham. There's the guy who brought us all of these great songs. Uh, if Foreigner really wanted to do a great Valentine's, they would have um, put out some unreleased stuff, maybe with Lou, although maybe they can't. But if Mick Jones wrote the song, which a lot of these he either wrote or co-wrote, um, they're, they're going to do it. And... You know, if I'm Lou Graham, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? <laughs> this this seems a little shady. I mean, people are expecting to get this nice red vinyl to put them in the mood for Valentine's Day. They put it on the turntable and they're like, where's Lou? We needed Lou. And again, playing I Want to Know What Love Is on Valentine's Day, maybe not the best strategy. Same with Jukebox Hero. Waiting for a girl like you, maybe. Anyway, the song selection could have been more lovey-dovey. You know, it could have been more of the foreigner love ballads, the ones that Lou Graham got tired of singing. <laughs> oh, I want to know what love is. I don't know what love is. It's Valentine's Day. Please help me to understand. So, yeah. Um, maybe skip the red vinyl and go and find the original songs with Lou Graham singing. And I wouldn't just throw this all under the bus, but this looks like um, some really, I don't want to say deceptive, but sneaky marketing. This is sneaky marketing for people who are looking for a great Valentine's gift. You know what? Do yourself a favor. Ask your wife, hey, what would you like for Valentine's Day? I guarantee you she's not going to say uh, a red vinyl album. That's what I want. And I want the songs to be done by someone else. The ones that I hear on the radio every day, I want it to be a different singer. <laughs> this, I don't know, folks. Anyway, I'm trying to have fun with this. You know, again, it, there's limited stuff going on in the world of uh, rock and classic rock. I'm waiting for David Lee Roth to say something else because <laughs> that's going to be great. Thank you to everyone who watched the uh, David Lee Roth uh, goes nuclear on uh, Wolfgang Van Halen video. That's the most views I've had on anything since the Eric Clapton interview. So um, we're we're working. The income went up a little bit overnight. Not 
in response to the video the way it should, but I'll wait a couple more days. I still need your help because um, it's minimum wage currently. It's below minimum wage. If you're in the state of Washington, I think I'm way below their poverty line. Um, so if you can help me out, YouTube memberships or uh, Patreon, those are the ways to support this channel. And, you know, skip the red vinyl. Skip the red vinyl. And again, maybe <laughs> in your name, honey, I decided to start giving to the Real Music Observer. In your name for Valentine's Day. <laughs> That'll go over great. Um, anyway, here's grand. This will go over great if you listen to it. All right. Second to none is truly second to none thus far this year. I know more stuff is coming. Uh, I've been hearing some fairly good stuff every so often. I let the patrons know about some of the things that I've discovered. Um, and that's another perk of being a patron. Uh, I will post uh, new songs and some people like new music. Some people would prefer the Lou Grahams, all right? Just give me some Lou Graham, and I'm good. And I respect those people because who's better than Lou? Who's better than Steve Perry and Jimmy Jameson? Who's better than these people? Really nobody, to be honest. But I'm trying to keep this thing going um, because the industry itself, they're of no use at this point. So here I am standing alone. Thanks for helping. God bless everyone, and I will see you soon.